Welcome to the Boxing Talk Show. Fab but firm with the Hall of Fame boxing referee. I'm Joe Cortez and co-host John Zamel for all of Las Vegas. Come on, guys. Let's touch them up. Three fight. I'm Joe Cortez. Fab but firm. Well, welcome to the Fab but firm show here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The entertainment capital of the world, and of course, the boxing capital of the world. Well, today we have a special guest oh, yeah. who's one of the uh, top good looking guys, big hearted <laughs> boxer, just for Timo, Timo, Teofimo uh, Lopez. Lopez last week. And uh, didn't get the win, but you know what? Look at him. So good looking, mm -hmm. sharp, ready to go. I always say there's boxing after boxing. This man's ready to, to take it on. My co host here, John Zimmo, and we're going to talk a little bit about. Your fight last week, Diego? Oh, yeah. Oh, tell, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that fight. I very, know. very uh, controversial fight. It was, a, it was a, a great fight. Leading up to the fight, it was great. It was a, a, emotional on both sides. Both, both teams were, were you, know, you know, throwing, you know, little jabs at each other. But <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, it's boxing. And right. people then the fans have to know what boxing is. Yeah. yeah. Boxing is, isn't, uh, isn't pretty. It's, it's a brutal sport. But how, how about pretty face, pretty face like yours? Yeah. <laughs> into boxing. Huh? It isn't pretty, but it's pretty for him. Okay, oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, you have to you have to stay you know conscious of, uh, of what's going on. I know that boxing is is dangerous. You go in there, you don't think of what can happen yeah. too much. You know what I mean? Because you don't want to get distracted. Of course. But you go in there, you have fun. Yeah, and I enjoy it. That's the important part. I enjoy boxing. Yeah, I know you do. And it, you know, people say he got blue eyes. Sometimes you get black eyes, you know? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the game. But, but I mean, but that's the game, yeah, that's the game. But you know what? Yeah. You also have a brother who was a world champion in, oh, a, yeah. in the featherweight division, right? I sure, yeah. Tell Jesse, us a little bit about your younger Jesse brother. Jesse Magdaleno, you guys have seen him, uh, we talk about you him know, show. many times in the ring, and he is a pleasure to see in the ring because he's an animal. That's what people love about him. Yeah. He goes in there and he did, he gets down to work. Um, he, he puts guys out, and that's what the, he's family, fan friendly. Yeah, Absolutely, exactly. yeah. friendly. I think the, all the the Magdaleno brothers for sure are fan friendly in one way or another. <laughs> yeah. we we put on a show for people. Well, that's good to see. Hey, speaking of which, speaking going back to your last fight because I don't want to skip over that. Yeah, this last fight against Teofimo, there was a lot of you mentioned controversial. Yeah. Um, we can go down the list. Obviously, there was a lot of talk in the beginning. Then there was uh, you know, there was talk about a stoppage. There was a lot, you know, the mm -hmm. referee got some flack. Your corner got some right. flack. Did you feel like the fight should have been stopped sooner? Well, what was going on with the average person wasn't seen is what was going on in the corner. Every, okay, after Every round, on the after every round, I was coming back to the corner and I was talking to my, my, my coaches and my team, letting them know where I was. That's why they were allowing me to go back out there and fight. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I wanted to ask you, being a, 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 you know, a great referee, the referees, um, they're trained a certain way they, they, uh, to notify the corner or, or, or the, the fighter whether they can continue what are things that you know and this is for the viewer um that shows what you know how to uh, when to call it when to call it because that's that's one of the things they were blaming the corner and the referee well let me tell you one thing as a referee i would have been a referee in that corner that in that fight that mm -hmm. night i would have come over to the corner mm -hmm. i told you first of all in the dress room that's why i take control back in the dress room i'll tell you right. back in the dress room listen i'm here to protect you first and foremost the safety of the fighter mm -hmm. second is to enforce the rules However, your cornerman, you know your fighter better than I do. If you feel it should be stop, stop it. Because if you don't, I'll stop it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the doctor will stop it. Right. But then I will go to the corner. If I see you're taking a little too much, I say, there, buddy, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But if I see you taking too much, I'm going to stop this fight. So show me something next round. Right. Did that happen? Hey? You know? that, uh, that the referee come over the sixth? commission came the referee came by okay. and um what people don't know is also my brother my blood brother was yeah. in the corner working my corner for the first time and to not to have someone that close to you not call it either mm -hmm. you know what i mean because he has emotional oh, ties of course. yeah 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 you know? he, he would call it way before you, you, know, you know and sometimes that's not good at the You're same right. time he's a it fighter sometimes, yeah, I know. I know at the fight. same time he's a fighter he, so he, he understands both sides i know he understands that but honestly me mm -hmm. as a referee yeah i'm looking at you like if you were like my son mm -hmm. somebody beating your butt <laughs> i'm gonna no that's it stop yeah. it I, yeah. I don't want you to take any more yeah so yeah. there's two different sides of this fight right there's the, the side that the people want to see the fighters go in there and fight 
And then, then the other side that, um, the you safety. know, they're like the safety the of the corners. fighter. All the, they want to blame the corner. They want to blame, you know, the referee. They, this and that should have happened. I've getting, been getting so much from the fans alone. Like, hey, you are a trooper. You are an inspiration. You are a warrior. You are a warrior. Yeah, you absolutely what, that's were. No, one, no one's saying you yet. Yeah. Yeah, is I, you I, are a, a warrior in there. But then again, let me bring up something. A very, very dear close friend of mine is Victor Ortiz, yes. right? He gets in the ring with uh, Josito Lopez, which I was ringside for that fight. He gets in the ring, and, and I knew after the fourth round there was something wrong. Yeah. But he continued. Of he course. continued to fight. Um, I, I think it was in the later rounds where he calls it himself, not his corner. He calls it, and he calls it, hey, I am done. My jaw is broken. Something's wrong. And That's it was right. clearly broken right here. You've I, seen that I rode, shot over and over again. I rode to the hospital in the, in the ambulance with him oh, that wow. night to the hospital. And for the rest of his career, they've called him a quitter. No. They threw uh, popcorn at him. They no, threw, no. you know, I, I was there walking him out, uh, beer at us. And they treated, they treat him, even at Staples Center when he fought Andre Berto, mm -hmm. they threw a pizza, a box with pizza in it at him after the fight. I was nailed on the shoulder with yeah. him on the way out. So I'm like, yeah, that's not it, good. So fight fans it's, need to yeah, so you know, it's, the it, it's either. So here. what do you, you know, it's, it's very, it's a fine line of where you should call it. Right? Yeah, well, let me tell you one thing. As a referee, I can tell you one thing. Fighters, and I was a fighter myself. Oh, yeah. We have heart. We don't want to quit. I mean, mm -hmm. it's hard for us to quit. Because in, in our heart, we see a fighter. When we watch fights on, in person or on TV, we watch, oh, come on, we don't want the guy to quit. You know, but in, in your heart, you know, you're not a quitter. Sometimes, like you said, Victor had a the crack jaw. He had a broken jaw. Yeah. We've you know, seen it, man. I mean, on, that, you know, that was a flush shot. But you fans season. out there, you're the ones that when a fighter ends up in a hospital, ends up in a coma, Ends up like other Donna fighters, Stevenson, Bobby you know, Jack, like, any of these right. other situations. So many fighters end up in either dead or uh, uh, like vegetables. I mean, you don't, you don't want to see that in boxing. You want to see a great fight, but you get involved emotionally. But then in the real world, wait a minute, he's a human being just like us. Oh my God! We have yes. a body. We got to with their life on the line. And they got a family. They got children. They got you know, you know they're married. Uh, they got uh, family members at home. You don't want to come home safe. So it's the job of a referee right. and a good corner and a good ringside doctor to stop it. One punch too soon, then a punch too late. Absolutely. We don't want any more tragedies in boxing. And I hope your fans understand that. And the last thing I want to ask about, because this is uh, this got more attention than the fight itself, unfortunately, was uh, Teofimo's antics after the fight. Right, right. He did his backflip. He does that. He's, he's mm -hmm. famous for it. And then he came over and made a little gesture towards you. Right. I don't know if it was a shovel or if he was sweeping you. I don't know what it mm -hmm. was. What was your take on that when you saw it afterwards or heard about it? See, what I, well, my take on that is, is sportsmen, okay? We have to be sportsmen, whether we are emotional or, you know, about the fight or good, getting good, hype. Good you know, sportsman, like. Good mm -hmm. sportsman. Boxing is a, is a gentleman sport. Absolutely. I would love to, to keep it that way. Um, if, you know, if I would have ended up in the hospital that, oh, that, yeah. that night. Uh, How bad would that have looked, of course. Yeah, it would have looked, it would have been a different talk, too, about no, to, undeniably. people's uh, actions afterwards. Um what I got in a report of Max Kellerman in, in, in the interview he was doing um, or a video that he shot with Teofimo saying that he was, he did that because of I went a backlash on his uh, Honduras background, mm -hmm, yeah. which, which was not true. Okay. Um, there was an interview on YouTube where I did with Ernesto Amador and he completely, that came from him. And I completely dodged the question. If you watch the interview, it's there, and I said nothing about it. Mm -hmm. But he he stated on his caption that it was it came from the camp from the Magdaleno camp, which was never true. You think right. that's just him trying to find motivation anywhere he can, or um, it might be. You think he was it making an be. excuse? But uh, at the same time, I think the fighters should get the the real story before they, 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 they spout out at the mouth. Right. You know, I, I like to see a fighter like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson used to say some things about his fighter that he used to knock him out, and as soon as he knocked him out, he was the first one there to, oh, to yeah. you know to to help him and to you know hold him up and. He was so kind. We love hearted. seeing that. Yeah, you know, you know he got, had a, a big heart when it mm -hmm. came. You know, you knock out a fighter, okay? And at the end, they embrace each other. They were like brothers, and yeah. you know, it, that's the way it is. You know, that's the way it should be. But anyway, I'm looking at your career down the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, my thing is safety of the fighters, and I want to protect this man. Like I said it from day oh, one, yeah. I love this guy, good man, him and his brother and his dad. And I, I, I say, you know, you got, you got, you got what it takes to be a good commentator. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you got the knowledge, yeah. you got the wisdom, you've been in the ring. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the oh, looks yeah. and you got the smarts. Yeah. And you're always and, a good guest yeah. on here. You know, right. you know, you gave me side out. We'll be talking about other things that are doing the, uh, the the show here today about becoming fights. Now, what are you to have your input about fights that are coming up? That's John. a good point. Actually, yeah. yeah. Let's actually let's start with that because let's let's recap last week. This last week we saw Javante Davis, who was supposed to fight Abner Morris. Didn't get a chance to because obviously Avner Mara's career-threatening, right. detached retina, which is the second one. Very scary situation. So Hugo Ruiz took on, on 10-day notice, took on an additional weight class, which had already been a second weight class from where he just was two fights ago. It's, he's fought three, day, three weeks ago on 10 days notice and obviously, uh, you know, got put down within, within one round. Um, what was your take on that fight and uh, what did you like what you saw at uh, Javante Davis? Did, did we learn anything because he fought a guy so below his class and below his weight class? Or? Well, we all know that that happens. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, fighters fall out and they have to replace them with somebody uh, right away, which can be dangerous. Sometimes. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Because you get ready for a specific opponent and then they put somebody else happens in there. Happens a lot. And, and it, Game, game changer. Could Jamal Charles last be, fight. Yeah, it could be a lefty. It could be, you know, they've done it to me, and you have to be ready for everything. So something like that for Gervonta to, to get in there is is kind of can play with the Okay, it's a, a credit bit. to him. And he was but, a lot taller than the guy oh, he was for training sure. for. So it, it changes the everything. Um, So you have to go in there and be able to, to adapt. Absolutely. Now, now cool Diego, in, in boxing, now you see boxing up from the outside looking in. You be a, you're, you're a commentator calling the fights. You see these fighters taking sometimes a little too much punishment. I mean, you're the right guy that could talk to you. Diego. You've been there. What's going on in the fighter's head right now or his corner? What do you think they're talking about right now? And this is where you're going to come in as an expert. Now, you, you know it all. You've been you there, are, yes. You've been yeah. in boxing, what, 20 years of your oh, life? Oh, 20 plus years. Yeah, 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 Since yeah. I was eight years old. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So the man, the man, the man knows his boxing. This is what I want to see. I like to see guys talking about boxing and know exactly what they're talking about because he's been in there. He knows what it feels to get hit with a body shot. Oh, yeah. You know what it feels like. He knows what it feels to get buzzed. <laughs> you know, when you get buzzed and you really actually feel like, mmm, going around, you say, Man, you try to shake it off because you, you've been there. Yeah. But these guys, some of the guys don't know what, they're, not, they're behind the mic. They do a great job. But I'd rather see somebody like you, mm -hmm. a Roy Jones Jr., yes. a Bernard Hopkins. Andre Ward. Right. You know, Andrew Ward. A lot they, of these former, they, They're yeah. talking. They're great. You listen to the, George Foreman. You listen, listen to these guys talking. You know they know what they're talking about. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and that's what I see a career in you in, in the future with the media because you yeah. have what it takes. Well, I, I love the camera. I love the, the, the action. I love being in front of the camera. And uh, I think uh, definitely being uh, some, anything that pertains to boxing because I'm a boxing fan too. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for boxing, I wouldn't be where I'm at. I love boxing. It's it's in my nature. It's in my character. Mm -hmm. I've learned a lot from boxing. Boxing can also teach you who you are. It can teach you on the inside of where you need to dig deep. And it's it, it's a passion. It's a love. Yeah. I love this sport. You, you know, I call you right after your last fight, and because uh, you know, I, I care for you, and I, I want to make sure you're okay. You were, thank God. And and I said to myself, man, this guy. I see him on TV. I see. I, I know all the all that you have inside of you. Right. You you're, you're a, a tiger. You yeah. you're a warrior. <laughs> and, but I know that behind the mat, you're gonna do a lot of good things. Talking about a lot of good things. I remember about 29 years ago today, yes, sir. February 11th. Very special Mike day. Mike Tyson got knocked out by Buster Douglas oh, in yeah. Tokyo. Yes, that Biggest was upset in history. What you yeah, that's an upset right there. I mean, it's, it's something that that uh, will will carry with Mike Tyson forever. <laughs> well, you know, Mike Tyson was a 40 to one uh, favorite. 40 yes. to and, one. And this guy, uh, you know, Buster Douglas was a uh, hollywood nobody. If I feel, oh, come on, here's another one round. That knockout. goes to show you what boxing is. Boxing, yeah. everyone oh, yeah, has every, a chance. And you better, you better come ready. Yeah, no matter whether you're chance. Mike Tyson or you know I, I, whoever you are. I think when you're on the top, that's when you got to try to be the, the, the strongest because when you're on the top, you're by yourself up. There's so many down here. Where they oh, get, yeah. they will knock you off the top so they can get up there. So I mean, Mike Tyson learned his lesson that night. You have the, any lessons? You have any uh, things you remember from that fight, Joe? Because you bring it up pretty often. Yeah, it's well, a good one. Well, I like. Well, well, what happened in that particular fight was when Mike Tyson had Buster Douglas down. This fight, uh, this fight took place yeah. in Japan. He had Buster Douglas Long down, time. and they, they were the, the the referee should have, should have picked up the count for the timekeeper. The timekeeper was at five. five. Yeah. You can see with the freezer frame, he had a white glove on. The timekeeper was five, <laughs> and the referee started at one, one yeah. two. Yeah, so, Mike did knock him out. So, so Mike, yeah. it would have been a knockout right then and there, but the referee picking up the count from the time, for not picking it up from the timekeeper, he took it upon himself. Now, Buster Douglas beats the count, 
the round is over, then he comes back yes. and ends up knocking yes. out Mike Tyson. How does that happen? People right? forget that a lot, man. And that's something that I doesn't, mean, you know what yeah. I mean? It gets yeah, overlooked And, and quite I'll tell you one thing, I got called in from the WBC and, uh, and some attorneys, they wanted, to, they wanted not, not for me to criticize the referee, but they want to know what is the duty of a referee? What is he supposed to do with that knockdown occurs? If a knockdown occurs, you send a fighter who's got a knockdown to the neutral corner, the first neutral corner, send him there, then you pick up, you look at the timekeeper, you pick up the, the, the count from him. That makes so, sense. So if he's at five, the referee says six, yeah. yes. seven. Not one. I don't start at one. Now, <laughs> now this guy's already. Guy's already been down five seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now he, he could. He, he would have not gotten up. I would have said, eight, nine, ten. The guy was still dying, see? Right. But mm -hmm. no, it was the other way around. So by him picking it up on one, that referee never referee another uh, big champion. For, which is probably, yeah. yeah. Which, you know, that's what happens when you see yeah. stuff like that. I got a question about referees, and I'm, I'm because I've, I've been waiting to talk to you about this all yeah. week. This happened this last weekend in the Javante Davis fight. Uh. After the fight, our friend Jack Reese, who we had on the show right after his, uh, oh, his yeah. Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight, who we know knows when to stop a fight, he stopped the fight, and he, they interviewed him right after they interviewed Javante. Now, right. I've never seen where they interviewed a ref right afterwards and asked, what did you see? I like that from a fan standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think any point, of, any type of transparency on the ref or the judges, you know, parts is good as far as I'm concerned. Did you like that as a former referee seeing Jack Reese interviewed? Yes, uh, you know, most commissions don't like uh, let referees talk to the media, mm -hmm. especially, you know, I mean, in that particular moment, it was a good thing. I mean, normally they don't call him because he did the right thing, no controversy. Yes. But when there's a controversy involved, that's what they want to bring the referee in yeah. to talk to him and say, you know, what, what actually happened here? Clear right? it up. You could clear it up. But Jack didn't have to clear nothing. He was just no. stating what he did. It he, happened right he, away. He spoke to, uh, to Ruiz. In Spanish, because mm -hmm. Jack, Jack knows. And the reason didn't respond. Right. He happens to be married to a Puerto Rican girl, you know? Really? <laughs> <laughs> so she teaches him a lot of Spanish. Yeah. So he said, Joe, I, I use that in the ring. So I'm of able course. To, which is good. And you did that, too. You were bilingual in the ring, and obviously you're bilingual outside of the yeah, ring. But when, you... I, but when I went to Japan, I had a little problem. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you started it. Yeah, exactly. That's probably what happened in the Tyson Buster Douglas fight. It's the translation issue. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, but, it, but it's so much fun. You know, we're here we are talking about boxing. And uh, I, that's one of the highlights in, in, in Tyson's career. Absolutely. One of, the, one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. It's the, probably the biggest, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, one of them. It's, it's the one people name the most. Right, right. yeah, yeah. Well, they also remember Mike Tyson. Yes, yes. how they, big he is. I tell these guys, eat dinner before you go to the fights. I mean, he has to bite Holyfield's ear off. Yeah, biting Holyfield's yeah, ear right. was pretty good. He said, he said, Joe, that's only an appetizer. I didn't eat the whole bite. <laughs> no, that's why he had to go I, back I for more. He was hungry. Yes, I just took a piece of ear. So he went for the other ear to take a little double taste. Yeah, just a little bit. And that's when he got disqualified yeah. by Mills Lane. I got a question for both of you. Uh -huh. What's next for Javante Davis? Like, what, where, where does he go from here? Because we know that he's special. We keep hearing he's special, he's fast, he's strong, he's got good ring mechanics, excellent defense. But what's next? Who does he fight next? What do we see next? And is he ready for Vasily Lomachenko, who's the guy we keep hearing him being brought up against? I believe that's a good potential fight for him. I believe that he does need a couple more fights. Okay. He's been off for so long. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And he's only 24. He, he, got, he has time to get back in there. He needs to get uh, some of that ring rust off. And I think after one round... You're not yeah, gonna, he's fought yeah. four rounds in the last 18 months. Totally. You're not, you're not going to get that much uh, experience. And, and I think experience is, is the best. The best yeah, get those for, rounds yeah, in. Yeah, get those rounds in and experience it. How about you, Joe? What do you think is next for Well, him? I think that uh, he has to take his time. Uh, he definitely needs a more uh, experience with, 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 with quality fighters. More active, yes, sir. He can't be fighting no palookas out there. I agree with you. you got to be fighting good, decent fighters that... That could give him be, com be competitive. Would Abner Morris have been one of those tests that you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Abner, okay. Yeah, yeah but Abner Mata has a, a, a world champion, a two or three time world champion. Yeah, I mean, he's smaller, and, but agreed. Yeah, mm -hmm. but he has a lot of talent. He has a lot of smarts. And I think just like. Uh, he would have been tested like Diego was for yeah, Tio Fimo. Yeah, exactly. A step up in competition. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, a step up. So that, that's what uh, Javante Davis needs. He needs some more experienced fighters. He needs to go more rounds. If I was his, his team, I would tell him, you know what? Okay, you if heard you were the guy. Familiar with. You got the guy going, you know what? How about if we. You know, carry the guy a couple of more rounds. Get some, get some ring rust out of yes. him. Move around mm -hmm. and learn a little bit more. We can stop him in the later round. But you know what? Let's get that work in. Plus, we get the boys exposure with the fans. Get to see what kind of what kind of talent you really have. Absolutely. So it's a win-win if you stay a little longer. Yeah, you, we've you, seen that before. We but, saw that with Tyson Fury's first fight back. But, but oh, what yeah. it is what it is that you know you got that knockout power. You want to yes, get excited. The, you know, you all take the chance of you may you hit something with a punch that. Sometimes you hit a guy with a punch. You say, "Why wow, he goes down? Yeah. I, I don't think I hit him that hard." Right. Yeah. And they go exactly. down. 
It's happened many times. Hey, to yeah. be honest, when yeah. we were talking about yeah. uh, before with Tia Fimo, with your last fight, mm-hmm. I felt like Tia Fimo wanted to get more rounds in. I know he was talking about the first round knockout. Now, I'm not saying he was playing mm-hmm. with you or anything like that. You yeah. definitely presented a much higher challenge than what oh, he was used sure. to. But I felt like he went into this with him and his team saying, let's not go for the first round knockout. Let's go for a little bit. Did you feel that way or do you think he went for it right away? Um, no, I think in the beginning his, his plan was to make a go statement. Go for it right away? Um, uh, make a statement with me. Mm-hmm. But um, I think as the rounds got on, he kind of second thought that. Slow down and, and say, you know what? Let's bit. see what you know, I'm working with him. Yeah, it's gonna go past, you know, the first point. two, first two <laughs> yeah. rounds, and then you know we're gonna take it in. Well, so you know, plan B. You know, with in. a fighter like you, with a lot of experience, you know, mm-hmm. and that, and you being a southpaw, and I've seen you work in in, in the gym, and I oh, see yeah. you fight. I see you have a lot of talent. You're very dangerous, and they know that going in. But they say, yeah, but we're gonna talk, and maybe we we'll get to his head yeah. and, and make you think that they're gonna beat you well, easily. Well, I, I also believe the distance that I was giving him in the beginning of the round two was it was a big factor. Oh yeah. He couldn't find an opening. No, and clearly. it was the first time he fought a southpaw fighter, so which was giving him a lot of problems. It's important yeah, yeah. to yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. we seen it with Floyd when he first fought Zab. It was yeah. the first guy that he ever oh, fought yeah. who was a southpaw on that level. And sometimes it takes. I mean, even a Floyd Mayweather takes a little extra mm-hmm. getting used to. For you know? sure. Yeah, well, I know. Even Floyd Mayweather talked about Floyd when he fought Conor McGregor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, southpaw. I mean, I mean, Conor McGregor was a southpaw, but he was from all different angles, and it was kind of confusing <laughs> until you figure him out. Say, so, okay. I'm gonna figure him out. I'm gonna be a little tired that I'm gonna go after him. Oh, you yeah. think he was? You think he took some time to figure him out, or you think he was just playing with his food? No, no. I don't think it, it took him some time to figure him out because he knew that uh, McGregor can punch. Mm-hmm. He does have that I, knockout. I, punch. I, I mean, I mean, I trained. I had McGregor for five weeks yes, on, the rules, on the rules on boxing. Me watching in the ring with him when he you was were there party. when he fought Polly. The was, famous. He, he was training with Polly Malinagi. Yeah. And, and I saw the, the punches that he was hitting him with. Whoa, this guy can punch. <laughs> you know, I said, if he nailed me with one of these punches, the punches that hurt you sometimes are the ones you don't see no coming. Oh, yeah. You know? Of course. And so if I'm, I'm over here and all of a sudden the punch comes out of nowhere, boom, this yeah. way, when it should have come with this one, yeah. you don't see the punches coming. Unconventional. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, so you, you get a little confused, and that's where there could be some danger. But uh, yeah. A fighter with an awkward style is more dangerous than uh, a fighter who who's textbook? been in the ring with yeah. tex- with yeah. textbook fundamentals. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that's, well, yeah. that's what happened when yeah. I used to referee Prince not seeing a met. He was yeah. everywhere, you man. Know? So, he yeah. was he was so awkward. He was all over the place. I mean, I, I used to use my ring mechanics to move around sometimes. <laughs> yeah, <it was> <laughs> sometimes I don't know whether to go to my right, to my left. Because he was all you over the place. You don't want to catch with him. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to clash with him. But then I said, you know what? I'm going to keep a distance and walk him out of distance. <laughs> But then when he fought Marc Antonio Barrera, sure. of which I referenced, yes. Marc Antonio Barrera took him to school. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. He took him to you school, know? yeah. And prison seemed to been out of the ring for about, like, he thought he was retired. Speaking of retired, I have a question for you. Marcos Maidana was famously happily retired. You, you, you see pictures of him on Instagram, on the fat, on the beach. And he's coming back. He just signed a deal to come back with a two-fight deal. Now, he's one of those famous happy stories in boxing, right? You don't yeah. get a lot of happy stories. Right. We all said, look, he took those two Mayweather paydays. Mm-hmm. He showed the world what he had. He put Broner down. And oh, then, yeah. you know, he got out, got some money, and he got out. Now he's happy. Now he's going back in, but he's doing it. I think he's making $1.5 million in the first fight and $3 million in the second fight. Are we happy for Marcos Maidana, you or know, are we sad that he's back? You know, I'm happy for him because he probably mm-hmm. got a lot of bills to pay. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, they make, maybe he had a couple of fights to make it <laughs> meet. Then Two fights, re- yeah. Then, then I can re- maybe get, he, he might get a Broner rematch, which would be fun. Yeah, no, I'd no, watch no, it again. Then, yeah, yeah. He lo- Broner lost the last one. Exactly. You never know, but it, it'd be interesting because he has a name, he has a following. But uh, he probably needs a little extra cash you know, to make things happen at the end of his career, you know? I would like to see him get back into boxing, but not into the boxing ring. Um, <laughs> something. See, we 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 have a platform in boxing. We build up a, a fan base, and that's what I plan on doing: getting back into the boxing scene, staying relevant, staying in the in the in the eyes of the fans. And you know, as a commentator, I think that would yeah. be the great thing. So yeah. next time you guys might see me. You might see two fuego in a suit. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, the fans, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, fighters like him here, he's thinking ahead. I like to see more fighters think like that way. You know, they're thinking of their future. Then only you're thinking about, I want to keep going, keep going. He's thinking about, well, you know what? I'm going to go to Plan B. I didn't make it where I wanted to, but all these years, he knows he's up to tail end. You said it yourself. Oh, yes, sir. You're told the tail end of your career, but he's looking at the next next step. What's next in, in line? What does he do best? Boxing. Does he mm-hmm. know boxing? Hell yeah. He knows yes, boxing. He, does. <laughs> he knows it inside out better than anybody out there. So why not? You know? Yeah. I think it would be a great opportunity. And well, uh, then, since we're talking, since you guys both know boxing, and you do, we have an International Boxing Hall of Famer, former pro, and former referee, obviously, and a current pro. We have a fight this weekend between Leo Santa Cruz and Rafael Rivera. I want to do prediction time. What round do you think Leo Santa Cruz will finish Rafael Rivera in? 
If, if you ask me, I think I give it the first five rounds. I say, I say, I, 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 I say between two rounds. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I never heard Rafael Rivera. No, no, no. I looked him, yeah. I had to look him up on Boxer. He doesn't right. have a Wikipedia page. So, and, he's 26 2 and 2. Mexican fighter. I mean, mm -hmm. good for him. He's getting a Santa Cruz payday. But, we yeah. all love Luis Santa Cruz. But, but, but you know, but 20, it's boxing. But 26. Two and two is not a bad it's record. It's not horrible. No, There's no. worse records. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, you never know what can happen. You get some of these guys out of nowhere, un unheard of. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know. Look what happened with your brother. Yeah. Look what yeah. happened with your brother. Oh, yeah. his, when he lost his belt to yes. Isaac Dogbay. You'd never yes. heard of Isaac Dogbay. No. Next thing you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it uh -huh. happens sometimes. But it, you know, you don't hear Isaac Dolberg anymore. No, you no, don't. No, you don't no, hear about him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but, uh, but but boxing is funny. I mean, you you here boxing today? Boxing full of surprises. Yeah, I think that's what everybody loves here, about it. You here today? You you gone tomorrow? Yeah. I mean, uh, there was uh, the fighters that were uh, Chocolatito Gonzalez. Yes. He, he was rated number one pound for pound in the world as the number one fight in the world. Six months later, he's not even in the top ten. No. He got knocked out twice by the uh, Rivera side. Uh, yes. Yeah. Swiss like Castle Rung side. Yeah. yeah. side. So you know, here we are. That's boxing like that, full of surprises. But then sometimes you find a guy like Manny Pacquiao. Stays on yeah. top of the mountain uh -huh. for that long. He said, man, and he's still champion today. Yeah. Still doing yeah. it. And you know what? In that fight with him and Marquez, everyone thought he died. Oh, okay? I, yeah. And he came back and resurrected. No, bro. I mean, look, <laughs> it, it, it had, it had so, an effect on his career for the next couple yeah. of fights. But now look at him. I mean, yeah. it's just insane how you can bounce back from uh -huh. something like that. I mean, when he took uh, Adrian Broner the other day, and it took Broner to school. I mean, All the way to well, school. Broner was, I knew, Broner was afraid to throw punches. I knew. Well, he wasn't throwing punches when I was sparring with so him. So inactive. You know what I mean? He's, he's very confident with just a, a pull back and a counter punch. That's what he yeah. does. Like, you are not, I told him personally, you are not going to beat a Manny Pacquiao no matter how old he throwing is. Throwing less than 10 throwing punches less than, around. Yeah, then 10 punches around. No, no, That's you, got, you got to throw, I would say you got to throw three, four, five punches. I was watching a fight the other day with uh, <coughs> Jeff Left Hook Lacey. Yes, sir. Against uh, Kalzaghi? Uh, Joe Kalzaghi. That's a classic. And I, I was watching that fight again because I refereed Kalzaghi twice. First, when he won his first world championship fight, then I, did, I refereed him against uh, Bernard Hopkins. And I, I remember he always <laughs> throw so many three, four, five punches. Bam, 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 Big bam. combination. Yeah. And he's not a husky built, mm -mm. well built, but he got a lot of smart, a lot of speed, and great conditioning. And that's what carried yes. him through with a Jeff look, uh, Jeff left hook uh, lazy. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. he hit him with so many punches. I mean, I mean, he, he was just in his pocket, in the pocket, <laughs> that he boxed it from the outside. Bam, bam, Sometimes bam, just bam. volume, right? Yeah. We saw that with yeah. Manny for how many years? Oh, where yeah. Some guys he just he just out punched them. Mm -hmm. And that's what that's what Manny Pacquiao does well. Yes, it's a sound point, but even now, ball. even at forty, he's still for, throwing for, for volume. Yes, from all angles, he's hitting all kinds of punches from all angles, and people are saying like, "Wow, man, this guy can really." Where did he get that? The speed. He still has the speed. He has the conditioning. And one of the things that I asked him before the the fight at the weigh-in the day before, I said, "Manny, uh, Avery Bond is saying that you're forty years old, that you have nothing left, and that he's gonna knock you out." And you say, you're going to knock him out. You're going to be the first fighter to ever knock out Adrian Broner. Yeah. I said, what do you have to say about that? He, man, he told me, Joe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not thinking uh, anything. I just know that I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to have everything yeah. ready for tomorrow night. I'm going to have the conditioning. I'm gonna, and he did. He had yeah. it all. He didn't knock him out. He got, he, he got uh -huh. close he got, to knocking close. him out in the seventh round, seventh to eighth round. But uh, Manny Pacquiao still showed. They, the conditioning is so important. It is. Okay, if you have, you can have all the smarts in the world. You can be the best puncher. Mm -hmm. But if you have no condition, you're over. You can't yeah. make it. Nope. Speaking of Manny Pacquiao, we heard a lot. There was much ado about uh, about a possible rematch with him and Floyd Mayweather before this last fight. That they were setting it up for it. Freddie Roach talked about it. Manny talked about it. I wrote a column on it. This is something that we, you know what I mean? It was a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of talk about it. And we haven't heard anything since. And mm -hmm. since then, they've been floating Keith Thurman's name. Yeah. They've been floating some other people's name. One, do you think it's still on the table? And you think it's just kind of under underwater? We haven't seen it right now. And two, if not Floyd Mayweather, who do you want to see Manny Pacquiao fight next? Both of you. Well, I do believe that um, that's a fight that, of course, it's it's one of the biggest fights. It's the biggest it fight of all time. Anticipated. The, 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 there was controversy with that fight mm -hmm. alone because of uh, Manny Pacquiao's shoulder injury. Um, I believe. Uh, with the way social media is, that fight was sell again. Oh yeah, it was oh, yeah. definitely. Sell it was the biggest fight bringing, ever, six hundred million dollars. Bringing back Even a Floyd Mayweather. Yes, they're bringing back a Floyd Mayweather, and then you see the current, you know, Manny But what Pacquiao if it's not Mayweather? Who in the welterweight division do you want to see Manny fight next? I would like to see him fight Earl Spence. Really? Oh yeah. I don't want to see that. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I like Manny too much. Okay, my my <laughs> my, my opinion is this: uh, I like to see Manny Pacquiao I'll definitely fight Floyd Mayweather. Oh again. yeah. The rematch will definitely sell big. I'm sure they get. <laughs> a, they probably get a couple of million uh, pay-per-views on it. 
And uh, it's good because it'll, it'll settle everything once and for all, even though they're much older. They've been, what, like four, four, year, four years mm -hmm. away? And they were old then. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and a lot of people say they were old back then. They still got a little spark of the old flash. So. But these guys, they, they, they still bring a lot, of, a lot to box. I mean, the names alone are just... Yeah, they're the uh, biggest yeah. names I mean, of their era, I mean, no May, question. Mayweather, his last two fights, he fought two uh, MMA guys. And I don't know if that's going to help He made uh, 10 yeah, million and 256. I, 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 yeah. I, think, I think Mayweather should take a two and a five before he fights Pacquiao. Yeah? Right? Yeah, because <laughs> he fought mm -hmm. twice in the last two fights in the last two years. But two guys are not. He says that he says he's got eighty million dollars worth of exhibition offers on the table. That's what he said this week. If you were him, would you fight Manny Pacquiao one more time? A dangerous fight, dangerous to your record, dangerous to your to your life, dangerous to everything for two hundred fifty million dollars when you don't need it, or would you fight exhibitions for the rest of your life for eighty to one hundred million dollars? Well, it depends. It depends how I feel physically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would say you know. Man, I know I'm not him. I, exactly. I may, I may go for the exhibitions if I don't need the money, but yeah. two hundred fifty million dollars is a lot of money too. I know, you know? man. It's yeah, so it and I, I may take that shot and say, you know what, uh, I will settle the score. One I've asked Joe this before. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, what percentage do you think it'll take Floyd to uh, to come back out? Because he won't do it for 50-50, of course. No. But what do you think? What percentage do you think they have to offer him for him to come back for the Pacquiao fight again? Uh, it's got to be maybe a 60-40 for him. Yeah, He's definitely right? has to yeah. get uh, you know the 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 bigger bar for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yes. I, I spoke to Freddie Roach about that. His trainer about the rematch after the fight when he mm -hmm. fought. Uh, 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 Adrian Bronner the other night, I said, uh, uh, Freddie Roach, uh, now there's talk about maybe you uh, uh, pack out fighting on Mayweather. Uh, what do you think? Uh, the, 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 you take the percentage. You think it'll be 50-50? And he said, well, no. He says that they are the money team and yeah. they're the ones. So it won't be 50-50. Uh -huh. But he's not in the position to be talking about No, that. he's not that guy. But, but I spoke to uh, uh, Leonard Ellerby about it right. as well. He said, Joe, there's a lot of welterweights. After the fight, he said, there's a lot of welterweights out there that we can fight. Uh -huh. We don't have to necessarily fight Pacquiao. But, I mean, it's already... You know how they are. Yeah. It's a and they've seen each other in two yeah. basketball games. Yeah. Yeah. Saw each other yeah, exactly. in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, like if you go see a house, oh, I love the house. No, right. no, don't show you. We got played play uh, that poker play. <laughs> you know, oh, right yes. Right yeah. Yeah. You, go, you go look at a house, and you know you like it, the broken. Uh -huh. the, you know, it's Maybe it's going to make them you, come you, in. You got to count it. You know, it's okay, you know, but... But inside of you, this is what you want, <laughs> yes. but you can't show it. You can't show you, you want to you want to you want to get the best <laughs> exactly. part. You want to have the edge. Yeah. Hey, fans, I want to tell you that this has been a great show today. Oh, having yeah. Diego Magdaleno on the show with us, John Zimmo, Joe Cortez here. Remember, guys, keep your guards up at all times, protect us all at all times, and remember, I'm fair but I'm firm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's my champ. Tu fuego.